Welcome back to Access Daily with our friend John Stamos, my man. He's family, yeah. By the way, bro, congratulations on the book, New Thank York you. Times bestseller. A lot of people talking about the uh, memoir. What, what do you think it is that resonated with, with people, and, or why I should say so much, and why the time now did you decide to do it? Well, that's a good question. They'd asked me before, have you written a book? Have yes, I did a little memoir myself. Did you really? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm, I should have read it before I came. <laughs> I'm not being funny. I, I didn't know that. What, was it? It was cathartic, or was it? Well, yeah, it was just sort of because I've been into like you a long time, and just kind of take a look back, and people get a little confused. It's not an autobiography; it's just a memoir. It's just like a little slice of life of what yeah. going right. to how you got to this point, right? Mine was really interesting because I didn't. I never thought about writing a book. It wasn't my deal. I could barely spell. I was like, really, you want me to write a book? I'm not that interesting. I thought. And then writing it, you like your story just kind of comes out. And I started writing it, and to be honest with you, a lot of it was sort of, I did this and I did that, you know. And I realized, you know, and it, a lot of it wasn't as truthful as it could, I could have been. And I, one day, I'll never forget it, I said, anything less than the truth is paralysis. And I just went, bleh, yeah. and started, you know, telling. It becomes a therapeutic story. process, right? For sure. What gets picked up most out of the book? Like, what stories do people really gravitate towards? Um, why is he using such an old picture on the cover? <laughs> was, was <fun. laughs> well, a lot of stuff got picked. You know, there was some, you know, there was a few things. You know, I really tried not to bag on anybody. I don't think I really did. I mean, there was some stuff that, you know. Um, and I remember the first week, more than anything, I was just like, I, I remember calling my publicist, Matt, crying. I said, what did I do? Why did I? Because I just was so honest about more about myself. Yeah. But the but the main thing was too that I've had so many beautiful people come in and out of my life over the years, and it's really a tribute to my parents, to my mentors, Jack Klugman and Gary Marshall and Don Rickles, and then you know, I oh, they, they've been asking. They, you know, I said I don't know, I don't know, and then I became a father at you know in my mid fifties, and I thought maybe that's interesting, and then you know then Saget died, uh -huh. and I was like, man, I you know I have something to, maybe to talk about now, and it. Bob is sort of all the way through the whole book, um, and um, it's it's you know it was it was so beautiful for me to be able to tell some stories about him that maybe people don't know. And it must have been, I, I imagine, difficult at times too, or at least it was for me when you do the audio version of the book, because oh, yeah. then you're saying the words out loud, then it becomes very real again. Yes. It was like cold reading your life. It's like right. oh my God, and do I. Do you have a I, different voice for the audio reading? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 no. Well, some of my friends made fun of me for for it. I tried to get, try to have a different voice, but it's um, and you have a book coming out too. A Working on it, thing, right? Okay. Called Rowdy. Buckle up, people. Okay. Uh, yeah, back to the voice. What did they make fun of? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe I was a little serious at times. <laughs> I've, 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 um, you know. But you sit in this little. They said it would take. I don't know how you did. They said, oh, five or six days. I took like thirty-seven days, and I ended up like paying for you know days because I because I got so emotional through a lot of it. And um, you're sitting in this little room, like a, like a, almost like a, conf you know, dear father, if I've sinned, you know, like <laughs> confessional. Telling, yeah, confessional. <laughs> and um, it was just, but it was my favorite part of it because I feel like the last five, it's, it's really, you know, the internet 10, 15 years, like it's hard, hard to concentrate reading. So I, I've been listening to audiobooks for so many years and it was a thrill to be able to do it. And um, I, I really love it when people come up to me and say, oh, I, I just loved listening to you. And um, it, it means a lot. That's awesome. And the paperback version is going to be coming out yeah, soon that's now, cool. too, so yeah. that's cool. You've I put made an extra, it when it's coming out in paperback. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I put an extra chapter in there. I don't know if you've ever dealt with this, but, um, um, you know, uh, I had a death threat when I was on Full House. And I cut it out of the book originally, um, and I put it back in. It was pretty scary. I, some hmm. some uh, deranged fool called up and said, I'm going to kill John Stamos. Wait, was it John Stamos or Uncle Jesse? Like, did they, he think he like knew? I didn't get, take the phone call, okay. but I'm assuming <laughs> it, it was, well, he was mad at me. <laughs> He, 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 he was a girlfriend or something, and it, but but he was I, th I think he was rather serious, and it was a I don't know if you guys have dealt with that, but it you know even even back then they took it very serious, and, sure. and it was like what? And I remember they you know they signed an FBI agent to me and all, all this stuff, and I was like a dummy, like I'm trying to you know ditch the guy, <laughs> fool, um, but and then and then I start when I was talking about that I started like and I, again I don't know if you've dealt with this Mario, but. Like, there's always some dude who want to beat me up. Now it's the opposite. The guys want to be my best friends. Like, hey, well, you know. But but it was always a, sure. you know. and because well, their girls all like you. Well, and so yeah. that doesn't that doesn't help uh, hey. with the other guys. But in this case, it was what well, this was one of the many. And I talk about a bully early on in high school, um, which uh, you know maybe he's dead by now. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> one can hope. Uh, <laughs> bullying is terrible, and this guy was a jackass. Yeah. But um, and Mickey Rourke would. Uh, 
I ended up writing about Mickey Rourke wanted to kill me for years. Mickey Rourke wanted to kill you? Yeah, and he I'd could have too. I'd be scared of him. Right? And this was in the 90s I, when it was Mickey yeah, Rourke. I you still know. see him at the boxing gym. I'm going to ask him, why do you want to kill John Stamos? <laughs> no, 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 don't mention my name. I won't bring it up. I won't bring it up. <laughs> oh, you must. I need to know the end of this story. Well, he, you know, it was, we. I dated this girl, and then then he, then he was with her. And oh, see, I, I knew it was going to come back to the girl. Yeah, it's always the girl. <laughs> I said something, not, not derogatory about him, but I was like, sure. oh, you're dating that guy, that older guy, you know. And, he, and we were at a club. And it was all quiet. It was in New York. He said China older club. guy. I probably he said older guy. He was a little older. Uh, and it was all quiet. And we're, you know, I'm having, and all of a sudden, bang, boom, crash. I hear all this stuff. And the, the club manager goes, uh, Stamos, you, you better get out of here. I said, why? Is Mickey Rourke wants to kill me. <laughs> what? Why does he want to get on? No, I'm not leaving. I'm sitting right there. My friend says, I know him. I'll go talk to him. My friend goes, because he, he just broke a bottle and he wants to cut your face. We got to go. <laughs> Is that and in the gotta, book? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's and so a great I left, story. and then and then um, just over the t like for ten years, it'd be in a restaurant, biting, bong, 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 crash. Was Mickey Rourke wants to kill you? <laughs> Have you seen him recently? This no, would be I a haven't. great it's hug. It out. You can yeah. orchestrate the hug. Gonna, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna make bring peace. It together. Yeah, we're I'm gonna make. Peace. I'm gonna broker peace right there. Tell him I'm a big fan. I would. One thing I want to uh, talk to you about, because uh, I, too, grew up playing the drums. I love that you're a drummer. Yes, I love that you're a drummer, and I love that you've been playing with the Beach Boys for so long now. And how did that um, union come about? Yeah, it's a, it's one of the, I didn't know you played drums. Yeah, I was we a were kid. just playing. Uh, yeah, we just done some concerts around here. I would have been. Will you come out and sit in with us sometime? That'd be Pokemon awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'll remember go play. Kids Incorporated. Yeah, that's right. It's a right little here. band. Oh, yeah. your your son played you. That was the coolest video because I saw on social What's you that? had the little cans on up. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah. Wait, he, that's about the coolest moment ever for you, right? It, it yes, it made me <laughs> so emotional. But that poor tambourine. You know, it's like he was beating it like he owes it money. It's like he's not. <laughs> like it was Mickey Rourke. It's like, he's like yeah, he was beating that like Mickey Rourke was to my face. That's good, kid. Uh, let's stick That's with good. that video right there. John Stamos, sit tight. Much more when we come back, including you going on the Beach Boys cruise. We're getting into yes. all that before. <laughs> Welcome back to Access Daily. We're having a ball with John Stamos in yes. our studio. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here, by the way. Thanks, Thank man. You. I appreciate you Thank coming. You. Uh, and congrats, Dr. Odyssey. One the of the hottest, hottest shows show. on TV oh. right now. So I, I have to say, I'm not, you know, I'm just, it's not my show, but, I, you know, Ryan Murphy's been so good to me for so many yes. years. Ryan, you know, I love to sort of telling the story. He, we had, right after, not long after Full House, you know, you have these development deals. I had one at Warner Brothers, I'm sure you had one at NBC mm -hmm. here. And, um, they, uh, and Kit, you uh, everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they, they, so you get to meet these writers and, you know, they pitch you shows and you go, mm, yes, no, yeah, like a big shot. And Ryan was this young writer who, uh, I think he had done maybe one show that nobody knew, and it was at the, it was at, it was at the um, I'll never forget, it was at the Ivy on, on Robertson. And we sit down, we order, and he comes in, and I say, okay, what's the show? And he says, uh, all right, so you play, um, you play a male hooker, and uh, <laughs> and you have sex with the with the husband and the wife, and you kind of fix their relationship, and I'm like, oh, I'm spinning up my thirty dollar iced tea, you know. And, 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 and I said, really? really? I said, yeah, and, and it's, you're not alone. You're, there's a really cute uh, black guy and a really cute blonde guy. You, you're kind of like Charlie's Angels, but you're hookers. And, <laughs> and just as he said, that, like the, the appetizer says, like, oh, God, I got to sit with this guy for another 45 minutes. You know? <laughs> but he turned out to be the great Ryan Murphy, and he's been so good to me. Yeah. What Glee. was that role? I remember Glee was one of the first ones. I did ones Glee. I, I did yeah. um, New Normal. I've done Scream Queens, all yeah. that stuff. I just, I Wait, just, what was so the hooker role? Did you ever take it? No. Oh. <laughs> But I'll tell you something, I should have. You know, I didn't realize what a G. But I'll tell you, on Doc Odyssey, I play, uh, I play a guy who comes on with his lover, and uh, I play J Don Johnson's brother, and we're sober, and I bring on my lover, and I have a, th a third guy, I'm in a throuple. So, Brian, we finally get, Oh, look at it. Full circle. Full circle. Full circle. Full circle. Full circle. Look at that. Yeah, it's a well, great... It's you a great, play uh, a lot of character. doctors. We're thinking about your career. Can you name all the doctors that you've played? One. Only one? No. Oh, no. Scream Queen. Oh, you're, yep. oh, oh, right. Well, oh, never mind. Yeah. You're, so, yeah. <laughs> um, ER, Scream Queens, and then a therapist on you, kind of a doctor, right there. I should there. have read my That's IMDb. A doctor. Totally I was just on un, 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 prisoned with the great Kerry Washington, and I played a, a shrink on there as well. And in General that? Hospital, around, you were not a doctor, no. you were a. Black Street Urchin. Street That's urchin. right. <laughs> Black, you were too you young. You played That's a doctor. Oh, my, my, my mother in law reminds me right yes. there. Yes. Say hi to your mother in law for me. I yes. will. I will. Mario Thank played you. a doctor. Oh, my God. Hey, look at that. You, John, you have not lost one strand of hair. 
since uh, General Hospital right well, look there. Look who's talking. Yeah, we're I lucky. I will say right both there. of your hair game is really <laughs> strong. Exactly. That's a good thing right there. Also, you were people's sexiest in the magazine back in 2007. I hope we have this picture. Hey. What do you remember about this, John? Not much. <laughs> Mara, you must have been in the world in the people's sexiest, right? He is we're right now. Probably lifting weight. Oh, really? Yeah. He's in the running. Did That's we find right. did, you, did you win? I don't know. know I don't I don't know. I'm just happy to be nominated. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> um, did you also see this? What is this? Oh, the butter sculpture. What? That's right. <laughs> You've got one of the world's largest but how did that come about? And how did do you eat it afterwards? What happens to it? You put it on bread. Um you put out a big piece. That's a big piece. Of, <laughs> I, you know, there's this great um, um, riot. Uh, it's a, a, a music festival, and they take the piss out of me every year, and I, <laughs> and I give it back to them, and it's it's really fun. But you must, and do you hear your name on stuff? Like, I hear my name on stuff all the, like, Step Brothers. I remember I was in the movie theater. Yes. They were, right, you shout know, out But, but I, don't, yeah. I always ask my writer friends, like, well, look, why me? The the um, My son watches this show called Ricky Dicky, Ricky Nicky Dicky or something on, right. on Netflix. And, and he loves uh, a Saved by the Bell as well. Um, <laughs> and uh, nobody watched this show. And the other day, he's like, da, da, da. I'm like, what? He goes, come here. I said, what? He rewound it. And there's one of the characters on there is like kissing this pillow going, oh, I just love John Stamos and Uncle Jesse. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you say to your kids? Like, that's wild, like, for this generation. Yeah, like, right. That's cool. What else is Billy up to? I know he is the love of your life. He is so cute and already so talented. Well, I don't know about his talent yet, but he's uh, he's a good human already. Yeah. And, and he has such... Um, compassion and empathy and and the other day he over the summer that he made a little movie with his um, summer camp and we went to and it was a they had a premiere at our community center where Allison uh, lives she wasn't invited um, and um, it, he he loved he was so proud of himself and then the next day was uh, we put up Halloween stuff and it was just me and my wife Caitlin and, and Billy and at the end of the day he said dad these were the greatest two days of my life and he said I'm filled with such gratitude wow. to hear him say that but just you know how it, old is he right now He's six. Six. But I mean, he knows awesome. the word. I was going to say 20. He knows the word. <laughs> that was obviously, a big word. You know, gr oh, it's not that big. But the way he used it was so, just, it just meant so much to me. And to see him on stage with you, like he wasn't even scared up there. Well, he, yeah, he just, he, but he doesn't ask. <laughs> he just goes on in the middle. I mean, this was okay. But when he comes on and starts banging the tambourine on God only knows or, you know, a battle right. or something. But he he just, just, just comes out. I'm always worried about, you know, killing him with a drumstick. <laughs> Because I'm looks like hitting, hitting pretty hard, but he, uh, yeah, he loves to come out, and he, he, he um, he's just the love of both of our lives. And I, I just don't know where I'd be without him. John, let me ask you: um, if he came to you and and wanted to get into this, nope. this business, right? I was gonna say, would How you encourage your it or discourage it? I, you know, I'm not encouraging it or discouraging it. I'm right. kind of letting him kind of. How do you feel you know, about watching, it? Knowing how tough it is. And watching stuff. this little movie the other day, he's so awful. <laughs> that I hope, <laughs> I mean, it was not good. I hope he's not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it right there. I say, Fair once enough. you graduate Yale, have at it. Yeah, uh, you great to see you, John. Come back Fair anytime much. and play with us. Don't yes. forget to check out the book. If you would have told me, it's available in hard copy and in audiobook now. In paperback, it's coming out on October 22nd. Check it out. We'll, we'll manifest right in the Grammy for the audiobook. Yeah. Right?